good afternoon and welcome to everyone who has uh, joined us virtually uh, for our first ever episode of SGA Live. We are very excited to be bringing you this initiative on behalf of Gutman Community College. Um, this is one of our newest offerings uh, to create virtual community for our students. Uh, but we've also uh, extended the invitation to staff and faculty and administration as well. And it is my hope that they will come and join us in this space. But our efforts today and for the rest of the SGA Live series are going to be to provide an opportunity for members of the Student Government Association mm -hmm. to teach uh, our community on various and assorted topics. Um, we've tasked them with the responsibility of coming up with a presentation that they would love to share with the community, uh, that they think would be of interest to the community. And so this is how we put uh, your SGA to work for you. Today, uh, we're going to be featuring our SGA secretary, Brittany Puma, who is presently on the chat with us. Um, and we're going to give her the space in just a couple of minutes. But we have uh, some information that we want to share with you in advance of her presentation. And so there's a couple of things that we want to bring your attention to uh, as part of our uh, messaging to the students through the virtual spaces that we're creating. First and foremost at the top of our list is we want to know how you're feeling. So mm -hmm. on the screen right now, you'll see a advertisement for a mental health screening through our Gutman Community College Wellness and Counseling Office. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to check in with professional, licensed professional staff so that if there's anything that you need, we can deliver that service to you virtually. And so you'll see the, the web address, screening.mentalhealthscreening.org forward slash GCC wellness. Uh, but you could also email wellness at gutman.cuny.edu for some more information. Another program that we have running courtesy of the Women's Resource Center and in collaboration with what is virtual yoga and mindfulness, finding peace in uncertain times. Uh, if you go to tinyurl.com forward slash Gutman yoga videos, you're going to find a repository of yoga that you could do from home to balance your mind, body, and spirit and hopefully align all your chakras. I don't even know if those things are connected. But it sounded good at the moment. Uh, critical for our students to know in this time is that if you haven't done so, please register to vote. It is critically important as we navigate this COVID pandemic and we see how our government is uh, doing good work for us and how it's failing us in other places. We would love for you to please be the voice and a change agent that we need. And we need students, we need the youth, we need them engaged, and we need them voting. So um, you can register to vote. Uh, uh, the deadline is May 29th. You can go to your cuny.edu forward vote and uh, lead your voice in the vote. Next up is our spring break. So today marks the start of spring break uh, for our Gutman community. But that being the case, Meetups are still occurring. And so if you're having difficulty with your classes, if you want to connect and get some extra tutoring, counseling, or um, the peer mentoring program is going to be offering uh, chats from 11 to 5 p.m. That's at tinyurl.com forward slash GCC hyphen the den. Very critical that you put the hyphen in. Otherwise, you're not going to find that web space. Um, but this is an opportunity for you to consider uh, using our resources while you're supposed to be on break. For those of you looking to work, peer mentoring is looking for its next generation peer mentors. And Brittany is certainly one of those peer mentors. And she'll probably allude to that in her speech. If not, I just gave her a shout out and put her on blast. Um, but currently, we're accepting applications. That it's been extended to April 19th. That gives you 10 days to get this thing in. Um, and being part of the peer mentor team is uh, it's a very dynamic and um, a critical piece of the Gutman experience. So uh, definitely we want you, we want your knowledge, we want your skills, we want your talent, we want your ability uh, in the peer mentoring program. And lastly, but certainly not least, 
Tonight at 7.30, the CUNY Coalition Students with Disabilities is hosting a movie night at 8 p.m. via Zoom. The movie is a surprise, but apparently uh, word on the street is that it's won an Academy Award um, and it is R-rated. So we, we want you to join the CCSD at Gutman as they host this chat. The information is up on the screen. It's too much for me to read. So if you could take a screenshot, take a screenshot. Otherwise, I'll put it back at the end of the chat. Um, but coming to you next, we are very excited to give you Brittany Puma, a second year IT major. Um, who serves as the secretary for the SGA. Uh, she's been very capable and, and dope in that role. Uh, she's also our techie. So anytime we have problems uh, related to technological um, things, Brit, our person, she makes it happen. And so uh, without much further ado, I'm going to hush up and turn this space over to Brittany who's going to talk to you about preparing for remote internship opportunities. Brittany, the space is yours. Thank you, Nestor. Thank you for sharing all those resources uh, and handing it over to me. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, mostly everyone that's here, I know, but you know, greetings to everyone. I uh, hope everyone is well. So now I'll be sharing my screen um, with you all and because I have a presentation ready for you all. Let's see. Okay, there we go. So uh, in this workshop, I'll be sharing on how to be internship ready. Uh, I especially know that during these times, um, you know, an internship is something that would make the experience much more better. Um, and it's something that everyone is worried about, um, you know, on how do I get an internship during these times, um, hearing that most of them are being canceled right now. Uh, some companies aren't really willing to do remote internships right now. Uh, so don't worry, I'll try to, you know, help you out by giving some tips and tricks on how you can be um, internship ready. So a little bit about me. Uh, like Nestor said, I'm currently a second year student at Gutman, majoring in IT. I will be graduating from Gutman this August and transferring to John Jay this fall. Uh, my major is uh, Computer Information Systems, uh, Info Security, and I will be minoring in Homeland Security. Uh, also currently serve as secretary on the SGA uh, executive board team, uh, and I'm also an admissions and access peer mentor, so I will be talking about the peer mentoring uh, you know, application and the program uh, later on. A little fun fact about me is that I lived in Ecuador for a year in my junior year in high school, uh, and from that experience, I now have a three-year-old Siberian Husky <laughs> that we got from Ecuador. Uh, so that's a fun fact about me. Now, what's an internship? So an internship is a learning enrichment opportunity. Uh, it it uh, gives you the ability to career-related experience into an undergraduate uh, experience, or sorry, education, uh, by participating in plans of revised work. Now, at Gutman, both IT and human, human services majors are required to complete an internship in order to be eligible for a graduation. So, for example, for me, I would have to do a, um, an internship that's 120 hours done over six weeks, and it's only offered in fall two and spring two semesters. So I'll be doing my internship uh, in the spring two semester. Now for human ser services majors, uh, the internship is 250 hours and we're two semesters. Um, and that's a little bit of info on, you know, what an internship would mean for you if you were a government student and, you know, in either of these two um, majors. Now, how to be internship ready digitally? Now that's a big question. and one of the answers is create a LinkedIn profile. This is very important. It's very essential, especially in these times. The way that you can showcase your professional skills to professionals is on this platform. And I want to go to my uh, LinkedIn profile to give you some tips on how to do that. So I'll be sharing my other screen. OK, here we go. So this is my LinkedIn profile, um, and one tip that I can give you is when you are creating one, if you don't have one already, um, this is your chance to speak more than what your resume says for you. So you can see here in my headline, it says, America needs you 29 and aspiring security analyst. This is my 
experience that I want to highlight the most at the moment. Um, for you, it might be a student at Government Community College or maybe liberal arts and sciences major um, or anything like that. But also this gives you a chance to tell professionals who you aspire to be. So for me at the moment, I aspire to be a security analyst. For you, you might put aspiring uh, phys physician's assistant. And let's say you want to look for healthcare professionals uh, to connect with and have a conversation about what it's like to work in that field. Then by putting that in line, it kind of is already a conversation starter. So when hopefully they accept your connection, it's already a good conversation starter and then the conversation just flows from there. Now also down here, you can see in the about section, I put about maybe three lines uh, of information about me. So I gave them my graduation expectancy dates, which is very important because most recruiters uh, are looking for when is the student going to graduate. That's mostly in the application. Uh, that is what determines your eligibility for that internship. So that's a key thing to put in your um, about like bio section. Now, I'm also an anti-trafficking activist, so that means that I fight to eradicate human trafficking. So then I, in this second line, I voice that by saying that I am an anti-trafficking activist and I stand with the anti-human trafficking movement and I intend to use my technical skills to fight alongside the movement. In a way, this is kind of like your cover letter, a very, very short cover letter. So let's say you want, uh, you're a human services major and you want to work in a nonprofit uh, to help people affected by domestic violence, for example. You can put that in your bio, and then that just lets people what your passion is, what you would like to do in the future, and that is a space to do so. Now, also down here, you can also, you know, put your experience, and let's say you might not want to put something on your resume because you didn't do it for um, a long time. Maybe it was like a week experience or something like that. You can still put this on LinkedIn uh, and it will definitely add value to your experience. Now also, one thing that you can do on LinkedIn is that you can join groups. So for example, I am a member of Whitney, which is short for Women in Technology and Entrepreneurship New York. Um, and this group is very essential because they always share um, a lot of resources, um, but you have to be, you have to record, join the group. Uh, but like nine times out of 10, they always accept the uh, invitation. So as you can see down here, they always provide scholarships, um, like opportunities. There's even an opportunity for me to be on the Today Show uh, to celebrate uh, National uh, Women's Day, uh, which was like a great opportunity. I wasn't able to go because I had to be there at like 4 a.m., <laughs> uh, but it was a great opportunity that was offered. For you, your interests might be different. Um, so you, there's always a group for you. Um, like I was just recently accepted to the um, United Nations uh, youth group also as a member. So it's a way to um, be involved in different communities. So that is definitely a big tip that I give. Uh, I'm just going to check back and see if there's any questions about anything so far. Okay, so I do see that there is a question and I do have a Q&A uh, set up, but I'm going to answer it anyways. So when do you think we can start to work? Um, that is a good question. It's a question that varies depending on the company you want to work at. Um, and right now, internships are remotely for the most part. So for summer internships, they tend to start June and July. And applications are definitely open right now. Um, and I'll be sharing some websites where you can apply to um, specific internships. So I'll go into that later. Um, and also another thing is that you can have a free trial of LinkedIn Premium. And one good thing about LinkedIn Premium is that you can see who viewed your profile. Uh, you know, sometimes it's like recruiters or, um, you know, people in certain companies that you want to be a part of. Um, so if it is offered, um, I do recommend to snag that free 30-day uh, LinkedIn Premium uh, trial because it is very useful. And uh, last tip about LinkedIn is that in the job section, uh, you can apply directly through LinkedIn. Uh, sometimes all you have to do is share your LinkedIn profile and you applied already. So here you can see my applied jobs. 
And they even tell you that they're no longer uh, accepting applications and how long ago did you apply. Um, also, another thing is that if you have LinkedIn Premium, they show you how many people applied for that internship and in what percentage are you in. So here they tell me that I'm in the top 10% of 472 uh, applicants based on my profile. And then you can also see that how many skills do you have among the top skills that they want in applicant. So that's another thing that I do want to uh, give you all as a tip. Uh, definitely search the job section, uh, search for technology intern. As you can see, I searched for summer intern technology. Um, and you can filter it as, um, as much as you like. Um, that is my last tip for LinkedIn. Um, okay, I see another question. Uh, is it is too much information on your LinkedIn not professional or is it beneficial? I would say that LinkedIn is the place where you can uh, shine the brightest you can, honestly. Um, I put almost everything on my LinkedIn. Um, a professional, he was able to give me a lot of tips. And he was telling me, like, you know, um, I'm actually going to pull up the tips that I got from this professional because I do want to the most information I can uh, with you. Uh, Brittany, we can't hear you at the moment. Yeah, sorry about that. I just had to mute. Gotcha. Okay. Sorry about that. So as you can see here, one small thing that he said is condense your Senate experience into one item listing your roles and accomplishments. And that is one thing that you can do. For example, uh, in student government, um, as secretary, I'm also chair of Student Academic Affairs Committee. So I decided to just put these two titles together and then put my, um, like, what I've done in those two positions under the same thing. So you can do things like that. Um, I put that I'm a member of this program that I'm a part of. So definitely, um, I wouldn't say that it's not professional to put too much experience. I, I've seen people's LinkedIn profiles that I keep scrolling down, 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 uh, and uh, it almost never ends. So don't worry about that. Um, and yeah, it's definitely your chance to voice who you are. You can also start a post, you know, um, and you can tell people, um, resources. Um, you can even share things that you know. And it's a really cool place to do so. Um, another thing is that let's say your dream company is maybe, I don't know, LinkedIn or maybe IBM. Uh, you can comment on their post and show that you're involved and that you're up to date to what the company is doing. Uh, sometimes you can even put in your uh, in the comments uh, who you are, you know, what um, that you're a student and that you're interested in said uh, industry. Would anyone be willing uh, to connect with me to speak more about this industry? And most of the times they do connect and they do say, hey, I saw your post, I saw your comment, um, and I will have some time to tell you more about this industry or role. So it's, it's like a professional Facebook, if you think about it. Um, you can interact with professionals, share a post, like stuff um, and be involved. Uh, and then moving on with my, um, okay, so how do you access premium? Good question. So usually in the me section, uh, you can see like premium subscription settings. Um, I mean, I'm in premium right now, so I don't know how what it looks like if I wouldn't uh, be premium. You can definitely go under the me section and usually maybe around here might be like, uh, free trial or, or something or um, usually you'll definitely see an ad of like hey would you like to subscribe to um, LinkedIn premium and then once you join LinkedIn premium you can be part of different groups as well like a premium career group also so now I'm going to be going back to sharing my presentation and going along so I'm going to be sharing my different uh, window there we go Okay, and then moving on, uh, one thing to do right now is have your resume reviewed by the CCPP office. Um, let me just, there we go. Um, and then I have their email later on in the slide, uh, but they're working right now, so they are definitely available to review your resume. 
uh, maybe even schedule a mock interview if you um, have an interview scheduled for an internship coming up. Uh, so definitely take advantage of that resource that's available for Gutman students. Lastly, have a cover letter template to use when applying. Um, this is definitely very important because most of the times in applications, they will say that a cover letter is optional, but that's a lie. <laughs> um, a cover letter is your way to um, add more to the ability of you getting that internship. It definitely helps you stand out from like thousands of applicants, hundreds of applicants, um, and it's like the LinkedIn bio, but a little bit longer. Um, that is your chance to uh, voice yourself, say why you want that internship and why you are capable of having that internship. Um, so usually in a cover letter template, I will be asking um, everyone who wants access to this PowerPoint presentation uh, to put their email in the chat so I can send you some more resources and send, uh, share the presentation with you. Now I'm going to be speaking a little bit about my internship experience. So I was a tech support intern at the DOE from September 2019 to March 20th. Uh, I'm not going to um, list all of my, uh, voice all my job duties, um, but I was able to provide help desk support to over 30 plus staff members and 100 plus students. Uh, I was the go-to tech person in that space. Um, and this is my first um, internship. It was my first internship. Uh, the way I got this internship was through the CUNY internship program. I don't know if anyone has heard about it, but I really do suggest to create a CUNY internships uh, account. Um, it is fairly fast. They do ask to attach your resume and then it's reviewed for about 24 to 48 hours. But in about two days, you will have a working account. And usually you're able to work at um, the DOE or maybe the New York City Department of like mental, uh, mental hygiene and similar departments. Uh, and this is my first only internship up to date, uh, but it was such a great experience. I learned so much um, and it was so nice to uh, be able to provide my technical skills to people and students and staff. Um, so an internship in a toll is a great experience. Um, hopefully that's the same for everyone who will have their internship in the future. And I do acknowledge that some internships are unpaid and some are paid, um, but I wouldn't let the fact that it's unpaid um, drive you away from getting that opportunity because it might be unpaid, but you are getting very good experience. You're getting um, access to a network that you wouldn't have access if you weren't an intern at that company. So don't let that drive you away from not accepting that offer. Now moving on, um, I'm gonna be sharing CUNY slash Gutman resources. So you can email partnerships at CUNY, at, sorry, at gutman.cuny.edu uh, to contact the CCPP office. Um, another thing that I suggest people do is to subscribe to the CUNY career success mailing list. Uh, this is the way that I get um, access to a lot of opportunities. Um, they even separate it if, in if you are pursuing or completed an associates or if you are pursuing or have completed a bachelor's degree. So like they do separate depending on um, the degree you're pursuing at the moment, but they share events, internships, full-time positions, and so on. Now, if you're an IT major or if you're interested in tech positions, I would suggest that you subscribe to In the Loop with Tech and NYC uh, mailing list. This is another CUNY mailing list that has given me many opportunities that I'm grateful for. Um, and then down there, you can see CUNY Internships Program, which I mentioned before, and the CUNY Service Corps. Their deadline is April 19th. Um, you can just search up CUNY Service Corps and the application is there. They do have a few uh, like eligib eligibility requirements, but then you can uh, review those on your own time. And then Nestor did mention in the beginning the Gutman Peer Mentoring Program. Uh, voicing it again, deadline is Sunday, April 19th. They have extended the deadline, 11.59 uh, p.m. So it's kind of like turning in an assignment, it's 11.59 p.m. So make sure that uh, you turn in that application before um, that time. And speaking a little bit about my experience as a peer mentor so far, uh, I mentioned before that I work in admissions. Uh, I've been working there since July, and it has been the best experience ever. 
Um, I have enjoyed every second of me working in that program and in that department and in admissions. Um, they always give us trainings. Uh, they, um, it's always a great experience, um, honestly. And even if, let's say, you work in admissions, but, you know, there's like FYE, um, there's also meetups. It's almost as if you're not divided because we have, um, uh, like I said, training. And in the beginning, before we started our positions, we went to a camp retreat. It was like about a day and a half. And it was an amazing experience. I got to like zip line for the first time. Uh, we uh, roasted s'mores near the fire, um, like went on canoes and stuff. And it was just a really great experience. And I really do suggest that you do apply. Uh, CUNY students in general can apply, not just Gutman students. Uh, so if you know of a friend um, that is looking for an opportunity um, in this department, I would definitely suggest that you forward the application to that person or even people uh, because it's definitely an opportunity that I wouldn't want other people to miss out on. Now, moving on into available opportunities. So I know of this software engineering internship that I'm on, that I'm participating in right now. Uh, it's offered by JP Morgan and Chase. And it's a uh, software engineering virtual experience. According to the website, it can be completed in little as five hours. Um, at the end of the internship, you um, get a certificate of completion and you get priority um, if you were to apply for the actual internship opportunity. Um, so just by completing this virtual experience, they prioritize your application uh, and that already makes you stand out from uh, hundreds of applicants. Um, walking you through a little bit through the experience, internship experience if you are interested. Um, they have videos for you, so they have like your supervisor um, and they tell you the task that you need to eat and they walk you through everything. So I would definitely um, suggest to enroll in this um, opportunity. Um, it is very easy, it's very, like they walk you through almost everything. Um, and this can definitely be something you can put in your resume. Uh, if you haven't had an experience like this before, um, I would suggest to do so. Even if, let's say, you're a business major, or maybe even uh, a non-IT field uh, major, I would say still um, apply or, or enroll if you're interested, honestly. Um, and then moving down, uh, join a CUNY meetup. CUNY is very involved in CUNY success initiatives for students. Uh, they have multiple meetups. Uh, they have CUNY. Uh, marketing uh, meetups, they have CUNY civic meetups, art, uh, business, and so on. Uh, and since right now everything is being virtual, I definitely will uh, know that they will be turning some of their events virtually. You can tune in to learn more about said industry. Now moving down, uh, check out Chegg's uh, internships. Uh, right now they are listing remote internships in New York City. So definitely check out the URL and, you know, find out what internship is being offered and which one fits you best. And also for the same thing for Indeed, Indeed is also listing remote internships uh, that you can definitely apply to. So at the end, like I said, um, or you, even right now, you can put your email address in the chat and I'll be forwarding this presentation and additional resources to you. And then lastly, uh, I do want to give some resources um, for these times. So for distance learning resources, you can go to the URL listed and then you can see um, everything that Gutman is doing to support distance learning and that transition um, and every update that you need to know. And also student services are being offered during, during spring break. Uh, so the Office of Wellness is open, CCPP and other additional resources, uh, and access to your SSA. Uh, so just wanted to let you students know about that. And also for CUNY updates, you can go to this uh, website to learn more about the grading policy or like they're answering every question possible. If you're currently dorming, what does that look like? And so on. And lastly, to find your nearest food bank, you can also go to this URL. Uh, I'll be posting the URLs in the chat because uh, I don't want to make it hard for you. Uh, so you can definitely check that out. You can search with your zip code and then see which one's closest to you. Now, that is the end of my presentation. And I know that I did hear a few um, chat sounds. So thank you, everyone, for your time and your attention. I'm going to be doing a Q&A time. So feel free to um, ask any question you may have.
Um, let's see, checking out the chat right now. All right, so we're gonna, Brittany, I'm gonna also say that um, because yeah. this is being recorded, so you know, folks can ask the questions, which is great. Um, they can also mute, unmute themselves to ask the question in real time if they feel comfortable, and then mute themselves again to give you the space to, to answer your question. Um, and and we're, we're doing good on time, so you, you've got that space here. But uh, also, I just need to say, yeah. this was an awesome presentation. Thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm clapping for you in real time. I'm also clapping for you virtually. Uh, as I saw a bunch of your peers did, but this this is an amazing presentation, and thank you for, for setting such an incredible bar for our first SGA Live. Um, we're going to open it to questions, so so go ahead, uh, community. This is this is your time to interact with Brittany and and get the knowledge that she has, so you can put yourself in a, in a good position. Go ahead, Brittany. Yeah, so I'm just going to be reading out the questions that are first in the chat, and then afterwards, if you would like to. Uh, physically like ask your question uh, feel free to do so but let's see what advice would you give to those who are nervous about going through with internships um, I remember from my first internship like I mentioned before the DOE was my first and only internship up to date um, I was even surprised that they um, wanted to interview me and I was even more surprised when they offered me the internship um, I would say when you are going into an internship, think that you will be doing something that you like. You will be practicing skills that you have been studying for a number of months or even a year, um, talking about like, you know, declaring your major and like taking those intro classes. And think about if they are offering to, you know, for an a interview, you already have the qualifications that they're looking for. They just, they just want to know you. They want to know your personality. They want to know, is this someone that I want to be working alongside with? So just think about that. Um, and I'm also nervous. And still, I am right now, I'm currently applying to summer internships. And I'm on LinkedIn, uh, interacting, messaging recruiters, uh, doing the like cold emails, all that process. Um, so I would say, honestly, don't worry about it because, it's a short-term thing also, so just think about that also. Most of the time, it's maybe 6, 10, 12 weeks. For IT majors, it's about two months. Um, so just think about that, um, that it's going to be for a number of months. And if you really like the company, you know, that's your chance to work hard, and hopefully they offer you um, a position there. Uh, think about an internship as an interview. Uh, it doesn't end with the actual interview. It continues as you... Um, begin your internship so hopefully that answers your question and then going down here does an internship need to be necessarily related to our intended career field or can we explore something else on an internship oh yeah definitely you can definitely explore um, something else in your internship it doesn't necessarily have to be in your career field I know people who want to, for example, they're a business major, but they also want to explore tech opportunities. And an internship is the perfect um, opportunity to do so. Uh, like, for example, the internship opportunity that um, I uh, that was offered through the presentation, the J.P. Morgan one. I mean, if you are a, let's say, liberal arts and sciences major, but you're like, you know what, like, I want to check this out. Feel free to do so. Um, you'll never know what you'll find in that journey of being in an internship that isn't necessarily related to your career. Um, and how do we know an internship is the right one for us? That's a good question. Because one thing that you have to keep in mind is even though you're the one that's looking for internships, you're also deciding what company do I want to work at. Some people want to work at Google. Some people want to work at a startup or a nonprofit. Um, it's also deciding what environment do you work best in. Uh, do you want to work in a flat, fast-paced one, or do you want to work in a startup environment? It's also determining those factors. Um, and also, you can always reach out to current employees in that company and ask them how um, you know work the work environment is there. That's also another um, thing that you can use LinkedIn for. Ask current employees what their experience has has been like um, in the time they have been working there. Um, and then what advice would you give to those who are, oh, okay, I answered that one. Um, so now that I've answered all the questions that were um, asked in the chat, if anyone wants to um, ask a question, you know, using voice, uh, feel free to do so or raise your hand.
Okay, Clarissa, whenever you are ready. So I have a quick question. Do you think that internships are necessary um, for people in order to have an actual um, full-time job in, or in general? Hmm. Okay, good question. Um, okay, so it kind of, well, now that I see another question, they, they actually both combine on the, if you don't have many things in your resume, are internships the best way to build experience? Um, I would say yes and no, if that makes sense. Um, for me personally, in high school, um, I was enrolled in computer repair classes. Um, so that was a, an experience that I had prior to my internship. And I also think that if you don't really, if you want to go straight into full time without an internship, that also can be possible. I mean, everyone here is pursuing an associate's in, um, you know, said major, and that's already a big experience that you have to offer. So you're definitely capable of landing a full-time job without really having an internship. Uh, but if you do want to explore industries or you do want to explore certain positions in an industry, then I would say maybe an, an internship is right for you. Uh, but if you have been already offered a full-time position or if you already know what type of position you want and it's available for you, then maybe go for that. Um, maybe go for that path. Uh, but also, let's say if you don't have um, maybe a, a major related job or let's say using tech as an example if you haven't worked in a tech position uh, and you want to apply for one uh, it's always that question like how am I going to get this job if I don't have any job experience um, but for all of us like I said before we're all pursuing an associates in said major you can always put revel uh, sorry, relevant coursework on your resume um, so if you're a business major you can put you know macroeconomics, micro and so on and that already says, tells the employer, this person has taken classes, you know, in all these areas. They have the knowledge of this thing that we need uh, for her to be an employee at this company. So you can always go to your re uh, relevant coursework. Uh, you can enroll into free certificate programs. Uh, I know for IT, they have a um, CUNY cybersecurity awareness um, certificate session. So that's another thing that you can do. Uh, CUNY always has our back in providing opportunities for us to put on our resume. So that, um, that's why I um, listed all the mailing lists that you can subscribe to uh, and see what opportunity uh, fits you best. So thank you for the questions. Um, also, if you want to ask another question, feel free to raise your hand or put it in the chat. Of course, you're welcome. I'm gonna take this time to uh, to a um, shout Thank out you. Brittany again and, and tell her that she did an amazing, amazing job with this. Um, this is an example of uh, the kind of um, usage of your skill set that I think uh, our students need to take advantage of. And so when, when we presented this opportunity for the SGA to step up into the space that we were creating, uh, we didn't really know what, what form this was going to take. And, and this is our first one that we're doing. But as you can already see, Brittany is utilizing a lot of the skills that she's used as a student leader, as a peer mentor, as a student at, at Gutman to uh, really understand um, how to craft a message, how to share information, and how to get that stuff out to, to the community in a way that, that makes sense. So my hope is, as I've been watching the conversation unfurl, you're yeah. asking questions because you're interested. You, you feel like, oh my God, this is something that I should be doing. And, and the, the correct answer is yes, absolutely. This is something that you should be doing. Um, to that end, uh, you know, Brittany is a resource for you now. She's, you know, if we were on campus, she'd be on campus, both in the den yeah. and downstairs in 004. But right now, she's accessible to you through any one of a number of, of apps, uh, through her Gutman email, um, yeah. but certainly, um, you know, through our SGA email, uh, and through our SGA Instagram account, um, you can reach out to her. There's her, there's her email if you want to ask her, you know, questions offline. Um, but for the rest of the SGA members on this chat, you now see where the bar has been placed, and uh, it's just pretty high. Um, my hope is that you're able to 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 meet um, what Brittany has has given us. 
But this is something that we, when we look at you and your experience right now, you shouldn't be sitting at home doing nothing. You should be using some of this time to get yourself ready to work in a remote world. Because um, at the very minimum, when something like this happens, you'll be one of those people that can work from home as opposed to somebody who doesn't know what, what they're doing and then thus doesn't feel pr productive or like they're a part of stuff. Right. And so I, I think that's some of the messaging that you're trying to get through to them, Brittany. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Um, um, talk a little bit about the CCPP. I'm not sure if you if you did that fully. I, I did include the email and in that they are open for resume reviews or mock interviews, anything like that to help them. OK, very cool. Um, the CCPP is a rebranded Office of Community Partnerships and Engagement, formerly OCPE. Now they're Community um, Center for Career Preparation and Partnership. There you go. I got the words wrong. Center for Career Preparation. <laughs> and so take advantage of it. Uh, they're a small staff, but they're very responsive staff, very nimble. Um, they're, they're doing their hardest to make sure that students have relevant internship experience that coincide with your chosen major and if you don't know what major you have yet then they're picking opportunities to help give you a myriad of skills that just move you forward in today's rapidly changing ever evolving job market yeah. um, Brittany what would you say are like the, the biggest or the greatest skills that have served you the most right now I would say um, being part of the student government and also a peer mentor has given me a lot of soft and hard skills that I've been able to offer to my internship position and continue to use them to even improve my uh, performance as a peer mentor and as a student leader uh, and skills that I've been able to use in my personal life. A lot of good communication skills that are always useful. Um, yeah. And uh, in terms of um, you know, from your first year to your second year yeah. in your growth, like at which point did you find yourself thinking an internship is is the way to go? I, I need this experience. I think, yeah, in my second year. In my first year, I was just trying to get through college, you know, especially being first generation. I was trying to understand everything that was going around, uh, going around me. But then in my second year, when I felt a little settled, I started taking IT courses, started getting technical skills. I was like, you know what? I think this might be a chance to um, be an intern at a company and even expand on those skills. Yeah, it's um, it's it's critical that in your second year you're starting to look at what things are going to help prepare you for the marketplace in case yeah. you choose to not go directly to a senior college. You're able to enter the marketplace very quickly. Um, but if you do go into your second year, then then you're able to um, uh, uh, take those skills with you into into your next college and help them craft a uh, internship experience for you that yeah. is relevant and meaningful. So so we like that. Um, as we come up on on our last couple of minutes here, Brittany, any any last second thoughts that you want to share with everyone or or things you yeah. want to say? So I just wanted to answer the last question that was on the chat. Um, how many hours a day do you need to devote? Um, I'm assuming that you're meaning maybe devote time to you know being more career ready and like being internship ready. Uh, I would say maybe like an hour, maybe an hour a day. You know, if you don't have a LinkedIn, spend that time creating one. If you're to do, uh, spend time on mastering you know the LinkedIn. Like how do you go around that platform? Uh, perfecting your profile, applying the tips that were given today on having a like superstar LinkedIn profile and start getting a lot of those uh, like profile views. Uh, yeah, but I would say maybe like an hour, maybe even 30 minutes to an hour a day. It changes a lot for you. Very cool. And so, so there you have it, folks. This is um, the, the first. SGA Live program, the premier episode like ever in existence. And, and you know, uh, because we're talking about jobs, this is something that Brittany can add to her portfolio now. And uh, we're going to let this live on the Gutman link. So we're going to have a web page that, that people can look at and, and see Brittany as a, as a professional presenter delivering content to the community via 
one of the platforms that we're now using to, to deliver classes, right? So this is, she's now skilled as a presenter using Blackboard Collaborate Ultra as the medium to get her message out. And so this is something that should go on her resume. And for the rest of you looking to do a chat or host a chat, or you're a blogger or a blogger or YouTuber, or you know, like, this is the way for the future. And so make sure that these skill sets show up on your resume, yeah. uh, definitely. Um, but uh, we're going to remind you that I, TikTok, really, LJ, TikTok, I guess, and Snapchat and IG and FB and all those other things. Um, just, just remember that your data is being stolen. Okay. That being said, um, yeah. Brittany, on behalf of Gutman Community College, we thank you so much for being our, our sacrificial uh, lamb and, and doing a top-notch, first-rate, grade A presentation. I'm excited for this one to, to, to have it live on our website, and I'm excited for the rest of your peers to to, to do their presentation. Um, we wish you the best of luck, and I'll, I'll be talking to you all offline in the chat to find out when our SGA meeting is, okay? All right, very cool. So to everyone who took time to join us on the chat, thank you so much. Uh, please visit the Gutman Community College website for uh, continued updates about not only COVID-19, but also the different ways that we're trying to help our student population through funding, emergency services, food pantry, um, and the like. And, and in all cases, do not hesitate to reach out to us, sga at gutmanmail.cuny.edu, leadership at gutman.cuny.edu, or to us directly in our emails, and we're going to reach back out to you. So with that being said, Brittany, thank you so much, and goodbye. Everybody in SGA, thank you so much. Everybody have a great afternoon.